Hey guys, Jacob Dupre here. I'm going to show you how to use Edison in FL Studio 20. Here's a track I've been working on. I used Edison a lot when making this track. Let me play it for you. So now let me walk you through how I used Edison to make this track. I used the master channel for that. You can see I already have some instances of Edison already dropped in, but I'll go ahead and drop a new one. You can add as many of them as you want to any channel and fill up all those slots. Then I came over to my audio clips, to my samples here, and here is that jazz sample that clip that's right here at the beginning of the track. So I wanted to start with that, use that audio clip as a basis to build the entire track. So I started by dragging it into Edison. And there it is, so now the whole clip is in there. I can play it back from within Edison. I can loop that recording by pressing loop here. I can also scrub through with this. So there's all these different sections. It's like a little song, you know, but I didn't want that. I just wanted to use the beginning. So I went ahead and cut down most of the end of the track. And you can cut any section just by clicking. You'll see, if you double click, you'll see that red line. That's where your play cursor is. So you can play from anywhere in the waveform. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut from here. You can simply press delete. And now I've cut down this audio clip to be smaller. But I used just up to this point. So I'll go in even farther and cut out more of it. I want it to be able to play as a loop. So if I go to here and click loop, So that's pretty good. I can always tighten up the timing once I've dropped it into the playlist and I want to get it snapped to my tempo. Now that I've done that, I want to go ahead and make sure I don't have any clipping at the end. Whenever you cut an audio clip down, especially if it's right in the middle of sound towards the end or the beginning, you can get a clicking sound and I don't want to have that. Let's go ahead and make the window bigger so we can see everything better. And I'm going to go ahead and select the end here and do fade out, de-click out. So I'll do that, and you'll see that it'll start here and fade that audio clip out into nothing at the end. So now I can go by clicking this bar, I can go all the way to the beginning of the track. I could do the same thing at the beginning if I wanted to. I could just take the beginning and click fade in, de-click in, and it'll do the same thing. So you'll hear in the original track that it already has a lot of low frequency information. There's drums already in it, there's a bass, there's the bass clarinet playing this little melody part. So I knew I wanted to get rid of that because I wanted to add my own drums and bass to this. So I did that by selecting the whole waveform, the whole clip, by doing Command A. So see now it's all highlighted. And then I went to Equalize, which is this tool here. And this is very simply an EQ. It's an EQ that you can apply to the entire track or whatever you decide to select. So it has a node right here already, but you can create one by pressing Control and clicking. Then I rolled off some low frequencies by dragging this node down. I aimed for about 100 to 200 and then a slope back up here. So now that I've made this change to the EQ, I can preview it before I click accept and apply it to the track. So let's listen.
After I was done editing, I went to this button here, which is the drag copy sample selection button, which allows me to drag and put this sample into the playlist. By the way, anytime I'm hovering over any tools or any menus or anything in FL, watch up here. This is the hint panel. So it will tell you what I'm ho hovering over. Watch up here as I hover over all these tools. See, it's actually telling you exactly what you're hovering over. It's a great thing to use when you're first learning. So now I'll go back to this button. I'll drag. If I click and hold and drag this, now I can drag my finished audio clip that I've edit and edited into the playlist. Now I can stretch it out if I want to and make it fit with the tempo. I did need to double click on it and go here to auto under the mode and time stretching to make sure the pitch wasn't altered. So now it should line up with my BPM of 110. Another place I used Edison in the track was for this moment right here. I started with an instance of Edison, of course. Here we've got one here. Go ahead and delete what was in there before. Let's look at the whole clip. Select, delete. There we go, now it's empty. And then I went ahead and dragged in my original jazz sample again. So there it is. Play within Edison. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and delete a bunch of it that I don't need like I did before. Because what I want is just this sax note at the beginning. So there's a really clean sax note that starts out this sample. And it's got a little percussion with it. It's kind of a cool sound. So I thought that would be a really cool thing to sample and turn into its own instrument that I can play on the keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit and highlight and make sure I get rid of the rest of this track. Probably can just do it from right here. Make sure my cursor's there. Remember, you can double click to put this cursor anywhere. Double click and drag to the end. There we go. Now I just have my sax sound. So now what I want to do is simply drag this into my channel rack and it will create an audio spot for that sound. So I'll click and hold on drag, copy sample, and drag it to the instrument rack. And I'm playing on my MIDI keyboard I have in front of me so I can play it like an instrument. Or I can play on my typing keyboard if I want to. So that was me actually typing on my keyboard. And I ended up using it later in the track as a melodic instrument to make some lines that I thought was kind of cool. But I also used it earlier on to make my riser sound. So I want to show you how I did that. Of course, I started with Edison, got rid of what I was working on, and then I pressed record here. And when you press record, no matter what you play anywhere in the arrangement, whether I were to play just in the playlist, like so, or I were to go into my channel rack and play on an instrument, So Edison will record, especially because I have it in the master channel, it will record anything that's coming through. So anything that's routed through the master, it will record. So that's a really handy way to say, you know, I want to just sample this one specific part of an audio clip I already have, or I want to play something into Edison that I can then mess with. So that's what I did. So I'm going to get rid of this and then go back to my sax instrument. <laughs> my sax slash bass clarinet, and then press record, and I'm gonna play a chromatic scale starting about right here. So here we go. Okay, so I've got that. 
Now I'm going to use some tools in Edison to turn this into a riser sound. It's a really neat trick. So I'm going to delete the silence at the end. Make sure I just have what I played. Get rid of a little bit more here at the end. There we go. Now I started by going to this really fun tool that's called Blur. Blur does what you think it might. Let me preview it so you can hear it. So you can hear what it's done is taken the attack on each one of those notes that I played and mellowed it out. It's added some space to it. It sounds like it has like a bit of reverb in it. So it kind of already is giving it that sound, that riser sound, like almost like an FX sound. So I can tweak the amount if I want to, I can offset, but here's with the amount up a little bit more. It's definitely too much. Probably the middle is good. I can also drag the impulse around, which gives a different shape to it. And you can draw it in with the draw tool down here. I can also drag here, I'll drag a straight line down. And you can turn off the draw tool and then you can drag individual nodes around and change the curves on them just like you would do with automation. Let's say I just want to do a simple peak like this. Preview one more time. Then I'll click accept and now it has changed my audio clip. Now what I'll also want to do, because this sound, it does go up in pitch, which makes it good as a riser, but I also want it to, get, to start soft and then gradually increase in volume. So what I'm going to do is use my fade in tool again, my de-click tool, and just select the whole thing, just like I have now, and click fade in. So now you can see what it did is it squashed the beginning of the audio clip and it gradually got louder. And now the last thing I want to do, you can see that based on just the size of the waveform itself, that this sound is pretty soft. I would have to boost it a lot to get it to really stand out in the track. I can fix that really easily by using the normalize tool. And what normalize will do is basically take that audio clip and make it the loudest possible volume it can be normally. So we'll select it, click normalize, and you'll see it boost up the whole audio clip. So see, this is the by far the loudest part right there. And increase the whole thing. So now the whole overall volume is higher. So now that I'm done editing, I'm going to do like I did before, highlight the whole track with Command A, then click drag, click that button, click and drag, and drop it in. Now the impact sound I made that comes right here in measure nine, that sound right there, I did that similar to how I made the riser sound, but I used the trumpet lick that was right here. So the way I did that is by clearing this up, pressing record, and playing just the part of the track that I need in the playlist. And you'll see that when I press play, it'll record into Edison. Okay, and that's all I need. So I'll click stop. Let's find a trumpet note. That one's good. I'll select, delete that, highlight, delete the beginning. Now I just have that trumpet sound. So what I did was highlight the whole thing, go to time stretch, and make sure the time multiplier is all the way up, which it is. Let's preview that sound. Sounds really metallic-y now and, and really cool, kind of almost dirty sounding, but I liked it. I thought, wow, that's cool. I'm going to turn that into something. So after messing with it, you have other things you can use, the coarse pitch, fine pitch, uh, formant preservation, but I don't need that. I just want to make it longer. I just want to stretch the time. So I'm going to go ahead and click accept. And now it's changed my clip. And then I added reverb, which will add a tail to this. 
So I'll go back to Reverb, which is right here. And you can see here you have the option to add a tail or not. If you don't add a tail, it will only add reverb just to the part of the waveform you've selected. So it won't make it any longer. But I want a tail, so it's going to add more sound because I want this to be like an impact sound. I want this effect to last a little bit longer after that measure 9, after measure 9, and go into that next section. So I'll click Accept. And now you can see it added all this extra time to the track. This is the tail of the reverb. So let's listen to the sound. Cool, right? So that's that trumpet sound, time stretched, and then with reverb added to it. I just love how you can make really weird, cool sounds out of ordinary things like a trumpet. I also used Edison right here. It's this region right here called Sampler. So what I did was take different parts of the original audio clip, that jazz clip that I started with, and I sliced it up so I could make it an instrument that I could play on the keys of my keyboard. Let me show you how I did that. So I started with Edison. Like always, I'll go ahead and open a new one from the plugin database. There we go. So what I did was just start with the main loop, with the jazz loop, cut out that same bit that I didn't use before, like that, and so I just have that beginning part. So to slice this up, I need to use markers. Markers are here. See right here, this button says Add, Remove, Marker, Region. So when I click it the first time, it's going to add a marker at the front here. So see, the marker's gone, now it's there. Now if I want to, I can go in and manually put a marker at each transient. So if I double click here, add marker, double click, add marker, double click. But there's a really nifty tool that will let me slice this up faster. So if I click Command A and select the whole thing, and I go to this button here, which is called Regions, click that. Now I'm going to go to Auto Slice. It's a few options, but I'm going to go to medium auto slicing. And what that's going to do is automatically put markers at every transient. So check this out. So now after I'm done editing, if I've moved some of the markers around, made some adjustments, deleted a few, moved them around, now what I'm going to do is create an instance of the Fruity Slicer. So I'm going to click the plus in the channel rack, click Fruity Slicer. There it is. I'm also going to make a new pattern so that new pattern is where this new instrument I'm creating is going to be. So now I can go to drag, the drag copy button here, click and hold, and drag this over to the fruity slicer. And there it is. Now, if I open this pattern, go to pattern and click playback, you'll see what happened. <laughs> So those MIDI notes were all playing and making the song sound like it was playing back in real time. But what's actually happened is all of these different regions that I separated with the markers, essentially all the transients and then the tails after the transients, have all been entered into this instrument. So now I can trigger them like a MIDI instrument. So I have a keyboard right down here, a MIDI instrument, a uh, Novation keyboard, controller. And I can just start at this C here, which you see lighting, lighting up on slice number one, and I can play chromatically and you'll hear every single note. And I can play any configuration I want. So that's exactly what I did in this sampler track that's here. Let me delete this one that I just made, but I'll open this one so you can see. But what I did was come up with this weird pattern. I kind of liked, you know, just placing all of the little audio clips I sliced and putting them out over the whole keyboard because I'm a piano player. So it's kind of fun for me to just sit down and play different notes and try to come up with funky rhythmic combinations. 
see, that was kind of interesting and I didn't mean to do that, but I just kind of played and it happened. So this is the one that I came up with for that section. There are a lot of other good applications for this Edison and Fruity Slicer combination. You obviously could do it with drums. If you had an audio sample that had a really good kick and snare, for instance, you could sample those out. So this is really just the tip of the iceberg with Edison. It's a very powerful tool. There's so many things you can do with it. And I hope this has gotten you off to a good start and that you'll be encouraged to explore it even more. Hey, I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have any questions, please comment them below. Thanks for watching.